Good morning, Vietnam. Not really. Okay. Jack here or Jack, whatever you prefer. They're both valid. So right now I'm in the Tashkent airport. It was only for one day, like being here. We're gonna go to Urgent, and from Urgent we're gonna take a bus to Hiva, which apparently was told to me is like a medieval city that is still everything intact. So we might see how um, a town or a city look like back in the day in this region. Um, so I'm kind of excited, um, but we move, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, right now we're just waiting for the flight. I don't know what the plan is. We have a bunch of new folk coming through, like, you know. Rainy Tash and morning. Yes. Nefes koşuklarının benen bulur pervazları Tağlar ara, bağlar ara uçup yürer şiazları Yani yıkanlar So we made it to Khiva apparently, that's how it's pronounced Khiva Not Kiva as I said earlier in the airport So yeah, we went from Urgenç to here by bus um, It's very historic ski, you know, saying so, you see a bunch of random clips of me just recording buildings. What? This is a Zoroastrian symbol, the swastika, the symbol of the sun. I love to do the symbol. <laughs> Yo guys, so <laughs> you might just seen a lot of raw footage of me putting captions of what it might be about. <laughs> That's because it's so much to see and maybe I can better articulate later what I saw but personally this is very interesting because just the um, practicality of the architecture and stuff like that. Like, and there's this one fact that really stood out to me. I'm just gonna, well, let me show that to you guys. Because I think it's really, really impactful. See that, that is a madrasa, as you can see here. And all madrasas have that shape where it's straight, rectangle straight. Now, our tour guide explained what a calligrapher that he knows, what it means. There are two meanings. I'll say the, the one that the calligrapher didn't say, which was that this represents the phoenix because it's rising, as you can see. And also in like Zoroastrianism, there's like an arrow. The arrow is very important to them. And so, as you can see, that, that curve thing there, the curve entrance, is the representation of the arrow. That really stood out to me. Also, 
if you can see, um, you can kind of decipher um, the the in terms of like Arabic Islamic calligraphy the word Allah written down there, you know, because you can see see this say straight a. Oh, wait, I'm moving my hands if it don't matter. See that? So, oh, a that's a l l a and then a h somewhere. I don't know where it was, but then you know Allah is also there. So there's like a double meaning, double symbolism, and that's that's really cool, you know. So these are veterans from Afghanistan. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Oh no, oh damn, well a violation just took place, but other than that, um, I'm, I thought I might, I finally got a moment to like, chat with you all, so, do apologize if like most of the text there was like, just, you know, captions, uh, about like what it was and stuff like that, but there was so much history out here that, I'm not sure if I would be able to put in a video that is of like decent length, regardless, um, you know, if there's demand for it, like let me know in the comment section down below. I might just do a specific video on that, on different aspects and things I learned. But low key, this place is like a medieval city. Well, medieval only in the sense that what survives of it. Like most of the things that you saw today was like authentic, period. And so, um, so it looked like that back then, um, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Anyways, um, so yeah, my thoughts. It's a pretty cool place. You should definitely go check it out. I think a day is enough to kind of see most things. Um, and uh, everything seems to be affordable out here. So we move. And yeah, it's an extremely historical city. Um, I did, you know, when I got a chance, say the things that I found most interesting. Like my biggest takeaways in that. Um, but yeah. So İsinizden çıkmasın ustalarını avanaları Hadi Bir 
bilen sürmedi halimden içini Bul arız gülüm Zede bir bir yer apa kılmadı bir yer Zede siyerden Zede bir bir yer apa kılmadı bir yer Zede siyerden to in Hiva and we're basically in a village not so far away from <clears throat> the old city where the summer residents of the Khan, Khan of Hiva used to be. If you want it, I'm wearing the kichip, I think it's called, I'll double check. But you know, it's their traditional clothing. I bought the summer version because it's pretty hot out here, I'm not gonna lie. And it's keeping me cool. It's better than me wearing the hoodie that you saw me wear yesterday. So right, right now we're going to see the actual palace. What you just saw there um, in the previous clip was the reception of where all the guests of the Khan would go to. Um, and um, after the Russians invaded Hiva, it became the office for the Tsarist Russians. Uh, and afterwards, yeah, something like that. Um, you know. The only thing that's like original was those pillars you saw. So yeah. That's a very windy place. Um, let me show you this thing. You may have seen from the top, I'm not sure if I showed it or not. I'm gonna check in. It's my camera footage. But you see that? The Khan used to have a pool out right out here. What you saw, like the footage, it's out here. See that? Oh my god. Anyways, the footage you just saw, that was like one of them watchtowers. That's like one of the only like surviving remnant of the palace. Um, and so the fun fact is um, that the Khan used to come here after Friday prayer during the weekends and um, bring his concubine or wife where he decided he want to spend a weekend with. He comes through here. Like this uh, location is like 30-ish, 20-ish kilometers away from like the surrounding locations. And that's good because usually caravans, whether it be military or commercial, take cover like 20 to 30 kilometers a day. So they'll be able to see a day ahead whether or whether who is uh, coming through. Uh, these are like cotton fields, right? Or some sort of plant, I, I'm not quite sure. Like, but this is now like an agricultural place. So only surviving remnant is that watchtower there. The first two floors are by soldiers making sure that, you know, ain't anything sus been happening or going on. And then of course the top floor is where, I was about to say czar, <laughs> I mean the Khan. Um, it used to stay. You know, like, it's pretty peaceful out here. It's pretty much a vibe as well. But it comes to show how things like rise and fall over time. And a uh, you know, testament to history. Nothing ever lasts forever. So, yeah. <laughs>
In order to win and to rush, the two shoulders must touch the land. That's 10 points. And you win. That means halal. That means 50% is like young boy. Young boy, only one shoulder touching. Like 50% win. If both shoulders touch it, that's halal. So, y'all, that was the sports center of the local town. This is like a village off uh, the city of Kiva. Um, but what's interesting is that you've just observed what happens in a normal day of uh, Kurash, like um, you know, a day where they train for Kurash, and you saw how the match works as well. Uh, it's very interesting sports, the Uzbek national sport. So yeah, just saying, mate. <laughs> guy I kept on mentioning his name is Nodir and you know he's very good at uh, explaining the history and everything about this place so all the information I tell you in the vlog is actually coming from him so could you explain to us like what's going on right now uh, like what's going on because they've seen footage but there's no context behind it <laughs> so yeah oh. Yeah. We are in Uzbekistan. Of course. Soon it will be Nowruz. Ah, yes. Very important day, important holiday in Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. And this is a part of Nowruz. This event is called Sumalak. Sumalak is what we got in this huge pot. Where there is this meal called Sumalak, which yeah. can feed like a couple of hundreds of people. Yeah. So that's why the families, friends come together once a year to cook this food. So one family each year invites their friends, offers food, all these things, music and dance, etc. So that's one of the most important days in the really life of Uzbekistan. I think. And I have a question. So uh, we're right now in a village, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So how would the celebration be in like cities and stuff? Because it would be... Well, in, it will, when you, more or less everybody is going to be the same system. If you yeah. see in a, in a city, probably there will be less people. Ah. In the villages, usually we expect like from 100 to several hundreds of people yes. during the day because preparing Somalek takes one full day, yes. 24 hours. Yes. And uh, what, how do you, how does, like, what's the ingredient for Somalek for those who don't Somalek, Somalek is actually just a wheat. Uh -huh. You soak the wheat yes. during two weeks. Then it grows and then you took the juice. Mm -hmm. This juice without adding anything else will be boiled. Uh -huh. Boiled during 24 hours. And that is called Somalek. It's so, so good, so nice, delicious and sweet meal without any extra add-on. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Thank you so much, Nubia. Yeah.